came onto the stage, the Delacorte in Central Park, like a storm came across there. And, uh, and it's been more of the same ever since. And I thank you for that. That, uh, that was really meaningful to me. Uh, wow, okay. Thank you, uh, Jeff, Nicole, thank you uh, to the uh, American Black Film Festival. Uh, thank you, Shannon, uh, my publicist. Thank you, Jimmy, for 25 plus years of being in my corner, unwavering. Uh, thank you, Ted, for being here, my from time to time partner in crime. <laughs> um, I've been talking about myself a lot lately. Uh, I am uh, beginning to get sick of hearing me do that, but that won't stop me from doing it, doing it again now because, you know, I'm an actor. That's what we do, um, but I'll try to be brief. Um, thank you all for being here, um, and thank you for this honor. Um, I got my equity card in 1989, uh, rather 88, in a Lorraine Hansberry play, Le Blanc, at Arena Stage in my hometown of Washington, D.C. I was 22 years old, and she had written that part, uh, the part that I played, for the director of that production, a man named Hal Scott, who originated the role on Broadway in 1970. He was 35 at the time. Among other wonderful actors I worked with on that play, uh, was Lilia Scala. Now she'd received an Academy Award nomination in 1964 for Lilies in the Field opposite Sidney Poitier, who made history that year by winning the Oscar for Best Actor. Lilia was born in 1896. She was 92 years old. When we first worked together, she was, she was and she was still fierce. Um, I think she was the earliest born person I've ever worked with in my career. She gave me some great advice on the necessity of hard work in this business. She said in her Austrian accent, success, she said, Jeffrey, you're good, but success will not drop out of the sky like a ripe apple. You must work. Three years after working with Lilia, I did my first major film role in a miniseries called Separate But Equal, opposite Sidney Poitier. I believe that's how I got my SAG card. Also on Broadway, Sidney, of course, originated the role of Walter Lee in Lorraine Hansberry's A Raisin in the Sun and reprised the role on film under the direction of Lloyd Richards, who would later become dean of Yale Drama School and artistic director of the Yale Repertory Theater. The first job I landed after moving to New York was, at, was a play at Yale Rep and I would do a play there every year for three straight years. Lloyd Richards gave me space to work and to grow. And also in those productions of Raisin in the Sun were incredible actors like Lou Gossett Jr., who he told me at one point was a friend of my father's, uh, Claudia McNeil, Diana Sands, and Ruby D. Ruby D. Ruby D. Come on. Ruby D, who after attending the premiere of Boycott, in which I played uh, MLK in 2002, walked up to me and said, watch out for your brains. <laughs> More great advice. Um, I mentioned these artists as a kind of random sample of artists who have influenced me in direct and indirect ways and whom I can trace through a degree uh, or a game of six degrees of separation back to my very first job. I've enjoyed the gift over the course of my career of working with many artists whose work had inspired me even before I met them. I'd watched them, I, I took notes, I was moved by the stories they told, and I set out to work at their level but in my own way. Many of them were black artists, but not all. I don't like much to be called a black artist myself, a black actor. I'm a good actor. Most of the time. Uh, a good actor is a good actor. A bad actor is a bad actor. 
or a politician. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but there are, in fact, significant ways in which we black actors differ from other actors. No other group of American actors, with perhaps the exception of Native Americans, was so abused at the beginnings of American cinema by the simplistic, limited characterizations that very often pass for roles for black folk early on. Many of those roles even weren't played by black folks. I found out a detail recently. I was digging into Lawrence Olivier's Othello, and I've been thinking a lot about Burt Williams, who if you don't know him, please, you should know him. Burt Williams made his first full-length film in 1913. Charlie Chaplin made his first short film in 1914. Burt Williams was a black man who played his interpretation of a minstrel, a black man playing in blackface. I've been thinking a lot about him. He was at the beginning, not of black cinema, of American cinema. And what I found out was that the first instance of blackface in America in the early 19th century was actually inspired by British troops touring with the show Othello. The first, the only drawing from Shakespeare's era of one of his plays was by an artist who attended the show. It's from Titus Andronicus featuring Aaron the Moor in blackface. Just a little detail about the history of representation in America and where it came from, or what it was inspired by, the British cultural trendsetters. <laughs> but, um, but how far we have come. And we've come this far, for me personally, to the point at which I'm celebrated for a role that critiques and mocks the persistence of similar limitations in today's culture because of those artists who came before us. Uh, artists like those I mentioned before and many others, like Leslie Uggams, my mother in American fiction. Artists who through their supreme talent and unconquerable persistence and grace won battles along the way for us and in some ways have earned our freedom for us if we only look back and learn from them and honor what they did. I have tried to do that, to add to the long and beautiful legacy bestowed to us by these artists and to pass along uh, the baton to the next wave, like my young friend Kelvin Harrison, Jr. and my young friend, Wendell Pierce. <laughs> <laughs> so that their freedom might be greater even than mine. And I hope that I have done that. Um, I think of Zora Neale Hurston's quote, no, I do not weep at the world. I'm too busy sharpening my oyster knife. For me, and my work was my oyster knife. I also have a few legitimate oyster knives back at grandma's house, but that's another story. But for me, it was the work that opened the shell. And uh, I thank you for this acknowledgement that maybe I did okay. That said, I'm not done yet because I'm not that old. Thank you very much.